chat a bit. Hi everyone. Is anyone a little cold, by the way? I mean, I'm, I'm from England, and if I'm cold, you guys must be freezing right now. Let's see if we can warm things up a little bit with a story. Um, I want to tell you the story of Jane. And I want to tell you about a journey. In fact, she has two journeys. She's uh, going to New York. She's in Sao Paulo. She's going to New York, York because she's the bridesmaid at her best friend's wedding. She's also going to go on another journey, a customer journey. And she's going to go on this journey enabled by the new Zendesk suite. And I'm excited to show you this because all of our product teams have been working over the last uh, well, many months, sometimes some even years, to really mature some capabilities into the suite that I'm going to show you off today. And in fact, Jane's going to uh, discover a number of things about the Zendesk suite, a number of new features. She's going to discover a new omni-channel end-user experience that is now enabled by the suite. She's going to discover new self-service and automation capabilities that are within the Zendesk suite and within products such as Guide. And she's going to encounter a bot on the way as well. And what she's also going to do is talk to an agent. And that agent will be using new interface within Zendesk products that helps her provide the support to Jane as well. Now, one snag that Jane has is that she was uh, all ready to go to this wedding in New York. She's traveling from Sao Paulo, and her best friend calls her up and says, she found these fantastic new shoes. I'd like all the bridesmaids to wear them. Uh, they're available on this store. Please can you go and get Please can you shop them? And Jane's kind of like, well, I'm in Sao Paulo. She's in New York. Might be a bit tricky for me to get. I'm actually going to try and get these as well. So she goes to the store, and here is the store. I should point out at this part stage, this is not a real shoe store. Please do not try and buy shoes from Shoe Lala. I tried it. It doesn't work. So she goes to Block Heels, and she, this is a standard e-commerce page. And there she is. Uh, she goes and finds the one she wants. She adds it to her shopping cart. She goes to check out. And just as she checks out, she thinks, ah, are they going to arrive in time? And what she's done here, you'll see, is she's actually clicked on the Help button at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And everybody's seen these Help buttons. Right? Sometimes they just provide a, a telephone number if you're lucky. Sometimes they might just provide a chat window that opens up. What the Zender Suite has done is taken a simple Help button. And with just one line of code that gets embedded in a website, puts in place a full contact center, omnichannel contact center. So let's see what that experience is. And what we've seen already is that this widget has already detected that she's on a checkout page and already knows that when people are in this context within a website, they often have questions around shipping. And so there's an article here, a self-service article that helps Jane answer the question that she's got. So she clicks on it. And it's got some good information here. It says, here's some standard shipping. She's thinking, two days from the US to uh, Brazil might be, a bit too much, might be a bit short. I want to get the fastest option I po can possibly get. And so she sees this Contact Us button. It's part of the omni-channel experience enabled by the suite now. And it gives her three options. And we're going to look at all three of these. She can leave a message with the business. She can live chat or she can request a callback. She's sitting there at her laptop in front of the TV, so she says, OK, I'm going to go for a live chat. And she types in a question. And the question is, do you have priority shipping? Now, what's happened here is that, as you'll see up here, what, um, what Shulala have done is that they've uh, used a technology from one of the Zendesk partners, Aivo. And if you want to see their technology, you should visit them at the back later. And they've created a, something called the Shoebot. And the Shoebot is really smart about shoes. And the Shoebot, and Shoebot comes back and says, is priority shipping available? Shoebot knows about priority shipping. And said, yeah, two-day priority shipping is available. And uh, so she says, how much does it cost? 
and Shoebot knows the answer to that. Priority shipping is free on orders above $75. And Jane has one more question. She doesn't mind talking to this bot. The bot's been quite helpful. But she says, can you promise me that they will arrive on time? And Shoebot uses something called sentiment analysis and goes, uh-oh, bots can't make promises. <laughs> but I know somebody who can. So what the bot is doing here is using the Zendesk um, send receive API within the chat product and actually is now transferring uh, Jane to an agent. The, the agent, Greg, has received the whole context, the whole conversation history immediately and is now going to look at, says, I'm now going to check inventory. Please hold on a couple of minutes. At that point in time, Jane's Uber arrives to go to work. She says, I don't have time anymore to do this. I've got to hit the road. But she knows that she has an option to request a callback. So she closes the chat and then goes in to request a callback. This request a callback is, might just be a feature. It might just be something cool that's within the suite. But I believe that this is perhaps one of the biggest things that can change the way customer service works. Because what are the two biggest things that people hate about customer service. The first one is agents not having context, right? Having to repeat ourselves. But the second one is hold. Everybody hates to hold. And so what request callback allows us to do is eliminate hold from the customer experience. Say, please call me back when you've got the right person to talk to me because you have my contact history and when you're ready. I don't mind when that is, but just do that. So she t puts in her number here, and then sends the request. Gets in her Uber, goes off to work, and trusts that somebody's going to get back to her. That person, although she doesn't know it yet, is Maya. And Maya is an agent. Um, and she works for Chulala is a kind of fast-growing organization. And you'll see, actually, later how fast they actually grow to. But Maya is an agent. And so what that means is that she looks after all parts of her business. She's managing the agent. She's managing the workflow. Um, she's handling tickets herself. And in fact, what she's looking at here is a new capability within the Zender suite, which is an app which actually looks at the live queue status between email chat, and phone. And this is an, a, a, a beta app that's available within this, giving a live, live interaction of this. And things are looking OK. So she goes back to answering her tickets. And there she is. She's answering uh, a message from Philip. And then something happens. A call comes in. Except it's not an incoming call. This is the request to call back. And what Zendesk does here is for her as an agent, give her exactly the same experience as if that call was coming in for the outbound call. So it's, it's actually making the call out to Jane right now in a similar way. So she's not having to change the way she works. Now watch what happens when she answers that call. She accepts it. Immediately, the context of the screen switches to Jane. So she has the exact history of what's gone on. Now, when you're a very small business, it may well have been that Maya was the same person who was talking to Jane. So she has that contact his history. But the big problem is what happens when we start to scale. And that call might be somebody else. So it's super, super important that she has the context with that. And actually, what you see up here is a new capability within Zendesk support, which is the customer card all of the information about that customer in one place. And then also, if you look at the bottom, the customer timeline, all of the interactions she's had with the business. So anyway, she reassures, she says, yes, it's in stock, reassures Jane that everything is going to be fine, and then just wants to send a follow-up note. Now, she doesn't even really have to think about where that note should be, but it's kind of logical that she's been talking to Jane, she knows Jane has called her on her cell phone. So why email her? Why not SMS her? So immediately, by typing a reply in this, it uses the Zendesk Suite SMS capability. She types in that reply. 
sends the message and sends the message off. What's she going to reply? Great news. I've taken care of priority shipping for you. Your shoes will be here in plenty of time. Jane gets the message on her phone and says, thanks. Thanks is a trigger then to say, that's her way of saying, yes, I'm done. It's the end of this conversation for the moment on this channel. But the suite is smart enough to know, well, if we're on this channel, why don't I offer feedback questionnaire on this particular channel as well? So it's not just offering it through email, using the last channel that we used. So she clicks on that, uh, able to click through, and says she had a, a good customer history. So there's a whole bunch of new things that we just talked about there. You know, conversation history, send, receive API, bots, customer card, customer timeline, blah, 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 blah. We're going to learn a lot more about these today. In fact, there's one session I'd encourage you to uh, check out. It's with Clayton and Sandrina, who are going to actually look at how Omnichannel actually works in practice using the Zender suite. So um, have a good look at that. So there we have it. I think Shulala didn't really lose the thread. I think the customer experience was actually quite good within that context. The problem is, is that Shulala grows, how are they going to keep on making this commitment? How are they going to keep on doing it as they add agents? How are they going to do what they say they're going to do?